Yes, straight to business and glad to have you join us again. This is Roundtable on OGTV. Today we're looking at, you know, June 12th on Nigeria Democratic System. How far are we as a nation? And um, I said earlier before taking that short break, um, joining me in the conversation is a certified uh, public relations expert and of course, the Chief Executive and uh, Executive Secretary and the Chief Executive Officer at Nigeria Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, Tokbe Adaramola. Mr. Tokbe Adaramola, of course, has been around for a while and, of course, should be able, you know, to shed more light on what uh, the subject matter is today. We're talking about June 12th, we're talking about democracy in Nigeria, the journey so far. You know, you, you, the, this uh, restoration of democracy happened in 1999 when former President Olusegun Obasanjo won the presidential election, thereby breaking the chain of, um, you know, long and decades um, of military rulership in the country. And of course, since then, we've been talking about democracy and we've been having a change of government from one democratically elected government to the other. And then uh, we're looking at uh, how far we have gone, where are we as a nation, when we talk about democratic system of government, a lot is involved. But of course, as a nation, let's not do a review of what we have done. Are we there yet? You know, talking about uh, you know the global best practices and then uh, talking about the international communities where this uh, system of government is practiced. Are we in a way meeting up? Are we measuring up what the expectations should be? Yes, this and many more will be what my guests will be shedding more light on today on the show. Yes, join me as a welcome. On the program, Mr. Tokwe Adamola is joining us via Zoom. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Tokwe Adamola. Glad to have you join us. Hello. Oh, guess we have a network each there. Yes, um, until we are able to restore what the problem is, uh, of course, you know what we're talking about, and it's about June 12th. Tomorrow is another day going backward. You know that um, we've, we, have coming, we are coming from somewhere as a nation. But of course, going forward too, where are we? Are we being able to do what is expected of us? And um, you know, a lot of question, conversation is ongoing democratically elected government in Nigeria. You know, they say it's the best system of government. You don't want to experience what the military system of government has been. Again, everybody's praying and we're wishing to have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, where we have our people, you know, also standing to represent us. Yes, um, Mr. Tokpe Adayamola, are you there? Can you, can you? Yes, um, I, I guess um, that is still an issue there. Of course, you know, looking at uh, where we are, we are of being able to say that this is what we want to do. This is the practice and this is the best practice for us as a country. We'll be electing people who are representing us at various uh, political offices. But uh, of course, it is uh, democracy. Are they living up to expectation? Are we supposed to be having, you know, these biting issues when we're talking about the age-long democratic system of government that we've been practicing in Nigeria? Is it really what, um, you know, what we can say? It's worthy of um, the, the system of government that has been adopted by the country. Is it that um, we uh, we have where we have uh, been able to, you know, can rate in terms of rating the rate ourselves as a country and say that okay. Yes, um, we've experienced the, the, uh, the military rulership and of course we're looking at uh, what democracy is and we've been able to put them back side by side and say, as a country, we are better for it. You know, these are things, uh, these are conversations that has been ongoing and is us, us, of course, calling for concern. A lot of people, you know, are coming up to say that if it's uh, democracy we're talking about, this is, should be in place, this has been uh, the situation and this should be the situation. But of course, you know, sometimes your opinion as, um, you know, is uh, not uh, what should be. But of course, I have somebody who's got a lot to, to tell us or only for the no, no thanks to to the to the next issue. Like, uh, Mr. Ada Amola, can you can you hear me again? Are, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Oh, thank, I'm there. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice having you join us. 
Yes, uh, straight to business. We're talking about June 12. We're talking about democracy, democratic system of government in Nigeria. The journey so far, what can you say? You know, you know, going forward, and you know, want to do a kind of flashback of where we're coming from. What do you have to say? Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. I think that um, we must start from the point of view of uh, where the actual story started, and that is June 12, 1993, which happened to be the watershed uh, in Nigeria's political uh, adventure or history. Uh, it was a day that Nigerians, irrespective of uh, culture, irrespective of religion, irrespective of uh, one, the modern uh, affinity or the other, uh, put all these sentiments together uh, to go 14 million Nigerians who went to the polls uh, to go and elect the president. Yes, um, that's a whole lot of uh, network issues we are battling it, we are battling with here this morning. And um, if you are able to also, uh, uh, it's nice, yes. um, okay, it's recording in progress. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, what would have been it, it, it's um, it's 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 okay to see that um, you are there to. You know, to give up. <laughs> well, uh, so much that uh, we see that this uh, network is kind of uh, messing up the situation here in the in the studio. But of course, um, you can you we'll keep trying. Uh, we can still. When the military government uh, came into power, and it gave, it was supposed to be. An opener of an army of hope for every Nigerian with regards to economic stability, uh, political stability, uh, end to poverty, end to insecurity, mm -hmm. as appropriately captured under the whole mantra of 93. But unfortunately, it did not crystallize. Mm -hmm. That's the signal there. Yes, um, this is a topic that um, is of uh, kind of interest to many, and a lot of people will also want to. In the compensation logic, the compensation logic mm. uh, that produced the presidency of another new government this time around, and that was uh, uh, Chief Olusha to a uh, new ambassador who became the president after uh, the military director uh, that uh, General Sonia Abadja sat on. So, June 12 actually was where we started, uh, was what we brought for, you know, to the entire political process and the gates, so called little gates of democracy that we may be enjoying today. Okay, you, you agree with me that um, recognizing the day, uh, the June 12th date as um, the most appropriate day for us to ce celebrate Democracy Day in Nigeria. Wouldn't be a bad idea if you want to look at it, what uh, Mr. President, the former President Mohamed Buhari, has looked into and say, okay, are we are, uh, you know, changing the date from May 29 to June 12. You would agree with me that it's the best idea for Mr. President then to, to to think about in that think about it in that direction. But of course, as a system of government in Nigeria. You know, it, it, it does it really work a practice and where are we as a nation, you know? It's a journey that started long time ago where you want to, you know, give account of where we are today. It's, um, we're talking about maybe originally 1999 to date and that's uh, almost, uh, you, you know, more than a decade ago. So you want to look at this and um, tell us, as a, as a system of government, is it really what, you know, you know uh, um, practicing? Is it a system that we are able to say that, okay, we are there yet? You know, when you want to compare to military rulership and the experience in, in the country today, coupled with, uh, you know, the economic situation and every other thing that is biting seriously. Are you there? Oh. We lost that uh, signal, and um, 
Yes, uh, the conversation continues, and you know, you also, I don't, people I don't, I'm sure would want to be part of this conversation. You know, this um, a topic that uh, you know brings a lot of people, taking people down memory lane to give account of where we are to look at. You know, democracy. It's it, it's um to me. While I was in school, we we recite this and we memorize it so well that. Democracy is the government of the people, for the people, and by the people. But of course, you know, in the practical time, when you want to look at it, it's, it's really the, 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 the government for the people in terms of uh, pra practice and practically is it. Well, I, I, I don't know, I don't have my opinion to, to be uh, on this matter, but of course, you would also be part of this conversation, and I'm sure you have one or two things to, to contribute. We'll be putting our, scroll, uh, our phone line on the screen, where you also be part of the conversation when the time comes. But uh, before, before then, let's uh, take this short break, and I'll be back. Okay, yes, uh, thank you. Glad I've been joining us again on Roundtable. And uh, the discussion today has been June 12th of our Nigeria Democratic System. Where are we? Yes, I have Mr. Tokwe Adayamola still on, on the conversation. And uh, the other time, Mr. Adayamola, can you hear me? We're yeah. actually talking about democracy as a system of government in Nigeria. Does it really yeah. match up with the expectation of the people? Are we there yet? You know, when you're talking about government of the people, for the people, and uh, by the people, you know, are we, are we, are we doing it uh, appropriately? Are we also practicing it the way we should be practicing it? Uh, Mr. Daramola, can you hear me? Can you, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. We we're talking yeah. about, uh, you know, the June 12th being another celebration come tomorrow, June 12th, 2024. Yeah. Is it worthy of celebration? Are we actually celebrating the true democracy? Yeah, thank you very much, Moyani KG. I'm happy to be back on phone. I, I want to think that um, the largest room in life is the room of improvement. Mm. And then, like uh, Ms. Bola said, the world democracy is still far better than the military. Mm. Uh, some of us, some of us were privileged uh, to have worked both closely with the military as well as the civilian uh, leaders. And the one cannot but uh, submit that um, we expect of the imperfections that we have in our democracy. Uh, it, 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 it is still the global norm. It's still the global political norm uh, of governance. All over the world, the entire world is gravitating or has gravitated more towards democracy. And uh, we cannot literally uh, be back in where the entire world is facing. But why I'm saying this, I'm not oblivious of the fact that. Uh, we are not yet there where we should be. Hmm. Democracy has simply defined the government of the people by the people and for the people. Hmm. So where are we hmm. when we want to make an evaluation of the concept of democracy with regard to what we practice here? Hmm. Is the government truly for the people? Is there the same mind or a consonant between the aspirations of the people and the aspirations of the leaders, mm. are the leaders of our democracy at this point by the feelings of the families of the people that they lead? Mm. At the time when they ask the people to, uh, to tighten their belts, what they ask, do they tighten their own belts too? Do they lead by example? And uh, also, all the five products and naturally should form with democracy, uh, which uh, June 12th was actually put to, 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 to focus on. Uh, are they still not living with us to today, i.e. eradication of poverty in the land, promotion of quality education, mm. insecurity, uh, curing of the malaise of insecurity, as well as um, producing a democracy that everybody will have between 
the leaders and the rulers today. But however, uh, I want to join Nigerians and want to encourage Nigerians that we may not rule out the drum, but let's reserve in the corner of our hearts a place to also appreciate what we have gone through. We know that we are not there yet, but we also know the level of advancement that we have made, particularly in our electioneering process. And uh, I, I, I'm one of those who have the implicit hope that uh, with, with, with repetition is the mother of skill. By the time we keep on this track, mending all our imperfections, in our imperfections in our electoral processes, our imperfections in the, in, the, in the the rules guiding our political process and political party associations, then definitely uh, we will be able to say one day, like the advanced democracies of the world, they also have their problems. You know, even the mother of all democracies, that is America, you know what they go through at one point or the other, and they are still even going through. You know, democracies such as in, such as in India, with the long years of its practice, you know how the challenges they are still facing. So for us, I think we are not there yet, but then, uh, if you ask me, uh, there is hope in the horizon. Just yesterday, we saw some members of the National Assembly uh, trying to fine tune the aspirations of some of us with regard to how democracy can be stabilized and be consensual in our land. Um, the six years, um, uh, the six years uh, tenure of the president and other political office holders, which, if you ask me, is one of the best things that will ever happen in our political process. Mm -hmm. Where you and I can bear witness to the fact that the, the period that our leaders really need to run government is so short to the extent that. When they come into office, they barely have two years to concentrate on solid hmm. uh, 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 development, development that will impact positively on the people. The third year, they are already preparing for election. So we have two years in four, which is very, very small. Hmm. And by the time they come back for another repeat of another four years, you know the shortcomings of most of our political leaders, Greece hmm. and Avarak. Hmm. It's either they become lax or they become highly kleptomanic, as you have seen. If you take a rough survey of most of our political officers, it is the second time that they embezzle our money most. And we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are very miserable under their leadership because they have the wrong impression that after all, they may not be coming back so soon to you again hmm. uh, for, you to elect, for you to elect them. Thank you. So I feel that. Yeah. I feel that this is the right way to go. Yeah. And it's also part of the byproduct of our democracy, which we must celebrate. Hmm. Thank you so much for that uh, comprehensive you know, um, analysis of uh, democracy. But of course, that brings me to this uh, question again, you know, talking about development in Nigeria. Fine, it's the best system of government. But you know, the way I see it in terms of development, when you look at the provision of basic amenities, which is expected to be the main obligation of any government, you know, whether at the state or federal, or, you know, local levels, then of course, you now look at um, talking about the, 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 the current insecurity, like you rightly mentioned, talking about, uh, you know, like um, this, I read uh, sometimes last week or so, that a statement credited, credited to former head of state, um, General Sonny Abacha, who says when um, insurgency or a kind of uh, is going on and lasts for 24 hours, the government is involved. And it, it seems looking like this statement has a lot, you know, when you look at how this insecurity has lived with us since, uh, you know, the, the, the start of democracy, I am not sure the, the, the government is looking in this direction. You know, kidnapping today, bombing tomorrow, the Boko Haram attack and all of that. And this continues. So what is the government doing? 
You know, we said to be practicing democracy. Are we supposed to be, you know, having this situation at hand? And again, secondly, if you want to answer all this together, you're looking at youth part participation, you know, in this system of government now. It's expected that the older ones are beginning to transfer this to, to the younger generation so that to be able to have those who also, you know, practice and ensure that we have a better society. What can you say in this regard? Do you think this is what it should be? Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. KJ. Uh, you have two questions to load into one. Number one, why is the issue of insecurity persistent in our land? Mm. Uh, my quick response is that the, 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 current, uh, the current structure of our, of our governance is, is to continue to promote and do little to solve insecurity in our land. Nigeria is so large a country that we cannot afford to tie all the powers of leadership uh, to the public as we have at the moment. Just recently, I was in a tiny country uh, called Namibia. Namibia has a population of than 3 million. And for every county or what you call a state, there is a state police. There is also concurrently a federal police. Hmm. As small as the team, the local government or those who take care of them at the grassroots are adequately empowered, you know, to, to take charge within their own area of jurisdiction. In such a way that the federal is not as powerful as you have, you know, under our own type of democracy here. In a situation where you want to police crime in a place called Adigbe in Abekuta, and uh, the officers that are posted to police crime are actually alien to the environment and to the network of the environment and to the type of people that live there, then definitely how effective do you think such type of persons will be? Mm. Compared to a situation where you have a devolution of power, so to say, an adequate empowerment of those security forces that know that grew up in the environment, that knew the environment, that know the character that live in that environment for so many years. You know, insecurity becomes reduced. I don't want to say cure because all over the world there's nowhere that you have zero uh, uh, insecurity. But at least let it be highly minimized. Mm. So what am I saying? The entire nation is so large to the extent that for as long as we do not look beside of the moving powers to, to the grassroots, by empowering the local government, for instance, we should forget about any genuine development and holistic development in this country. Hmm. The grassroots of the local government is supposed to take care of the people at the cradle. For God's sake, Mr. Governor and the leadership team should have little to do with uh, constructing projects, with constructing intra street roads, and with constructing minor recreation centers, which should fall within the purview of the local government. But what do we have today? The local government that should take care of all these challenges have been seriously emasculated and tied to the open strings of, uh, of, of the government, as the case may be. So uh, as long well as we keep this type of system, I can bet you that uh, keep theory insecurity will be pretty difficult. In addition to the erosion of our cultural values, you know, the values that made us think when we were growing up, they have also been seriously eroded. You and I know how, um, how those virtues of um, Yahoo Yahoo and so on, writing in many above all things, have taken the center stage in the constitution of many as you speak to me, unlike what we had in the past. Hmm. In the Yoruba land where I grew up, we had our parents who always tell us, not your man, if you want she, remember the child or the children of who you are. Who you are. Yes. And they also tell you the sanctity of your name, that don't spoil your parents' name. But where are all those things now? Hmm. Where is issue now? 
So we must begin to examine all those fundamental areas where we lost it, you know, and not take issue of insecurity as an isolation. Hmm. I, insecurity is just a symptom. It's symptomatic of a fundamental flaw that has happened, you know, in our societal fabric. So, and I think that part of it, uh, I was quite excited, and I pray that Mr. President will have the sufficient willpower to be able to put into place pressure, legislative pressure, in such a way that local government should be allowed to play their roles. Mm. They are the closest to the people, and they should be in a position to know whether in terms of security, whether in terms of empowerment, whether in terms of provision of infrastructural facilities, what should be hmm. the needs of the people and for them to take care of it. And then if we have issues, then we know who to hold. But as, as, as it is today, we don't know who to hold. Hmm. We don't even know your local government chairman, <laughs> some less of your councillors. So, the democracy is so far away from those that we should serve. Hmm. And this is a very fundamental issue that uh, we have to, uh, to, to look at. But be that as it may, I feel very so strongly that um, that uh, it, it, with, with consistency and with uh, with the desired willpower on the part of the leader, uh, someday we will get it right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you, you remember I asked the other time uh, when you want term of rating, you want to talk about uh, youth participation. But before you go ahead and answer that, I also want to remind you that, um, you know, when we are talking about government of the people, you have made a very valid point there by saying that, okay, we are not feeling the impact of the local government. Who are the closer to the people who are supposed to be the one at the, you know, the center of knowing what is actually the need of their people? Because we, if we look at it, the de development, so to say, is not touching down as expected. What happens to the poor of the poorest masses? Those who are supposed, you know, to be benefiting from this system of government. You're talking about, you know, the system of education where we still have you know the, the system not um, as expected of course we're talking about provision of basic amenities we're talking about electricity the water and all of that so in all these how, how, how do you say the written you know where you want to talk about the youth participation that is one then the written in terms of holistically when you want to look at it do you think anything has changed so far in in, in terms of you know what we're practicing of course like you've said Consistency, maybe we'll get there one day, but when you just want to look at uh, an overview of what we have done so far in, in the country. Well, thank you very much. Before I go to the new issue of youth participation, let me address the issue of what has changed. Um, if you are privileged to have worked with the military like myself, you will discover that the governance of the drug groups is a very close governance. And uh, it is also a governance that is extremely uh, oppressive. Uh, we sit down today to talk and ventilate about issues uh, affecting our democracy and evaluating those who are leading us without anybody coming, uh, as it were, uh, to, come and, uh, to come and exterminate you and kill you. Uh, I'm not observing the, 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 the democracy of some of the challenges of uh, uh, occasional violence there and there. But when you look at the depth and the quantum of it, um, you will realize that under the military, there was massive quelling of the voices of the people. And uh, of course, so much killing of the perceived oppo opposition. You remember the issue of uh, Telegiwa. You mm. remember the issue of uh, Rewani. Mm. Uh, you remember the issue of Agansa Kato. Uh, you remember the issue of um, several killings hmm. that we had just because these people had a divergent view, you know, to how the government of the day was running. Uh, but under a democracy, uh, we may have but we may have imperfections and a bit of it, but it is kept under the under wraps, unlike what we had previously in the state under the military. Uh, a democracy also fostered, you know. Uh, a little bit of the rule of law. That is why, in spite of our imperfections, we still have elections, pockets of elections going the way 
Another side, the, the other side of those that hold the pendulum of power. You know, when you have election and the party just came and won in a state that you are thought uh, would be won by this as part of uh, liberty that uh, we are enjoying, and also part of opening. Uh, I am I am a writer. I'm also an analyst. And, and I, I sit down now, I see what a lot of people write. I see the open confrontation and abuses and the condemnations that we even give our government. Uh, I dare say that you cannot try that under the military or any other or practical government. Um, so I, I believe that we have a little breath of liberty, liberty of expression, liberty of a rule of law when you compare to what happened under what happens under the military. Okay. And I feel that even in terms of development, uh, let's be very factual. Uh, the military, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I may be wrong, uh, there is the need for under a democracy uh, for the people, you know, the concern now. Look at the violent competition that is going on among the, the, the state government. Even though I'm not holding proof for them, because many of them are not measuring enough to, to accept their standards. Mm. But then we can still have a feel that somebody is still thinking in the corner of his heart that I may still come back to meet these people in an election. Mm. I better feel, I better feel the way that they are shouting out. I better do what they are asking me to do so that I will have something in my credit card. You know, you never had that under the military. Anybody that satisfies the president and see, see, the school and okay. I know, I know you have a lot to tell us because of your experience with the military, of course, I know. So, and our, of course, our, our time is fast spent, so quickly okay. talk about the second the question. Yes, the youth. Uh, I, I, I think that um, we, need a lot of, um, we need a lot of the orientation of our youth. Because as we speak today, uh, there's so much dependency. Many of them believe that let's, let's, let's 